A3 action going on. 661. Okay, so I built out this epic champion that I recently summoned in one of my last videos. Um, the epic champion right here, Arwid. And she seemed to have a relatively interesting kit. One that was interesting enough for me to want to go ahead and build out and, and try out. So that's what we're going to do here. She is a damage dealer. She's an attack based champion from the Sylvan Watchers. And if you know, okay, and she just got her buffs removed. So let's go ahead and, hmm. Well, I think the best thing we can do right here is take these buffs off of him. Yeah, he's going to come back, but let's uh, do what we can here. And this is going to be one of my first times actually using Makage. So I'm going to transform because I've seen people do that. And then I think I see people do this move here. Not enough accuracy here. But maybe, maybe I got to rebuild her. We'll see here. Let's put you to sleep because I don't want you hitting hard or anything. Now, Arwid, she has, you know, her A1, which is going to have a, a build, kind of like Contra, where she steals a debuff. But we're going to go ahead and hit the A3 here. Axe Sleep. Okay, so we did 65 there. That's her A3. It does more damage if there are no debuffs. We're going to look at her kit again real quick. So damage increases by 30% if this champion has no active debuffs. Also ignores unkillable. This is... So the damage that you just saw is not exactly a true representation of it because she didn't have like increased attack she didn't have or she had like a debuff on her as well so this move she's not going to be able to do anything so we're just going to hit the a1 here decrease that turn meter that's an annoying move in there and what are you going to do okay so you're going to put rotus to sleep except he's paired with sippy so he's just going to wake up anyway Let's prevent you from taking a move. We're going to hit the A1 on uh, Yastrid here. Okay, so we did 50k there. That is with increased attack. We didn't steal any of the buffs. So for the Sylvan Watchers, one of the main things that I was thinking about when building her and wanting to you know, do the showcase was to um, kind of talk to you guys about how Sylvan Watchers is probably one of the harder... What do you call it? Um, factions to deal with. Now, part of it could be, oh, there's not a lot of champions out on the roster yet. But the other side of it is, at least when I was doing it, I don't know if it's the case now, that I didn't really have any damage dealers. And because I didn't really have a lot of damage dealers, Sylvan Watchers was taking a long time for me to do stage 21 like i can do it but it just takes a long time to do so i was a uh, you know decide i tried to find other champions and I, I found some champions i'll show you guys in a minute who i found that i use in my sylvan watchers for some damage sorry if uh my thoughts were a little scattered there uh, i have a hard time focusing on multiple things i don't have ADD, adhd or anything like that i just can't multitask there is damage that I could pump out with Creedon. He's not a bad damage dealer. Daifi was actually somebody I was using for my uh, Sylvan Watchers 21 team. So Faction Wars has a damn near five, and that's because he does hit pretty hard. Orn, I guess argument could be made for Orn, but other than that, I didn't really have anybody. So then I saw Arwid, Quivergrass. Not, she's still relatively new. She's not too well rated anywhere. She's kind of just your average champion. But I thought, why not try her out? She's got the Kratos Axe here. A1, 50% chance of stealing one random buff. She is booked, by the way. I have mine fully booked. Stealing a random buff. AoE, before attacking, removes all debuffs from this champion. And then a 75% chance of removing a random buff from all enemies. So she removes debuffs from herself. And then she's going to have a good chance, 100% chance. Assuming she's got the accuracy, I gotta check my build for her. Her Axe Leap. I think is her biggest hitter. Damage increases by 30% if she has no active debuffs. Also ignores unkillable if this champion has no active debuffs. 
books down to a four turn cooldown. I'm not too big of a fan of four turn cooldowns, but it's okay. I'm not going to trip over it. Accuracy increases by 50 if there's no active debuffs. Naturally, you don't have to worry too much about accuracy. I kind of tested her out a little bit, but I wasn't really paying attention because I was doing other things. But now I'm here to pay attention. Push back a little bit of the turn meter. Decrease defense and weaken. Oh boy. Okay. Let's check this A2. She's got increased attack. And then she's going to have a chance to remove buffs. Uh, buffs from the enemies, but there are no buffs except for this shield. Boom. Okay, so I saw 51, 93 on Mikage. Let's push this back here. Maybe go into the next fight. And she died. Of course, she's squishy. She's just my, my little glass clan, uh, cannon here. Clannon. All right, she put in work there. I've often gone up against people who are really low levels with like five mythical champions and kind of just get ganked. It is what it is. All right. So obviously UDK is there. We're just going to see if we can remove buffs or do anything with this. And okay. I actually wasn't paying attention. So I was more paying attention on the stone skin to see if we could get it removed. And we're looking... Oh, it did not crit hit this time. Yeah. This guy's probably looking at, at his uh, attack history. He's like, oh my god. Burrito Slayer attacked and he failed back to back. Oh, my defense is so good. It's not a bad defense. I'm not going to lie. Okay, now let's check it. We're seeing 130. I saw 130 on our mons. I didn't see what was over here. I should probably slow that down. Let's check our mons again one more time. This guy is getting freebies from me. It's okay. Push this back. Decrease defense and weaken. All right, pay attention to Narcis here. And reaction popped off. But we did actually remove all of these buffs. So that, you know, that's a thing. We won the 50-50 with the stone skin. Let's see what the A3 does to Uko. We don't have increased attack. And reaction gear. Does everybody just have reaction gear? Dear God. All right, let's take her into the dungeons so that we can kind of get a sense of the damage that she pumps out in um, the regular dungeons. We're on 20 right now. We're going to check her A2. 136, 154. Let's go ahead and leave and come back in. This time we're going to do it without any buffs or debuffs so we're gonna just boost our own turn meter lydia is not gonna do anything here and we're gonna hit the a2 again so three uh, so 30k 50k just about let's test out while we're here we'll test out her a3 without any buffs so we can kind of get a better sense of uh what she can do so here we are we're gonna do the a3 and we're looking at 67 okay now let's go ahead, let's do increase attack, decrease defense and weaken, test it out again, the A2, we're seeing 130, somewhere between 130 and then 150, and that's looking like it's pretty consistent, 130, 150, let's leave, go back in, try again, we're going to do increase attack, and then we are going to try our A3 here, let's try her A3 against Tyrell, defense-based champion. And let's see it. And 200K, 200K, I like that, I like that. That's pretty nice. You know, I should try with Shu Zen. Shu Zen would be pretty good because um, she can single target, increase, give an extra turn, and then increase the uh, crit damage as well, just to push her a little bit further. Let's try that A3 one more time against Tyrell. Oh, 231 this time, I guess Helm Smasher proc'd. Helm smash it proc that time. Let's go ahead and lock out uh, Apothecary. And let's check the A1 this time. Looking like 141 on the A1. Of course, this is only Dragon 20. But I'm trying to give you guys a sense of how she performs in PvE. Like, obviously in PvE, she's going to do pretty well. I'm, I'm seeing like 155, 157. That's pretty nice. In PvP, it's a little bit different just because people have, especially if you're, like the thing about PvP is 
you're always competing against people who are either spenders or they just have better gear than you. And again, like I said, Arwid isn't in my best gear. She's in like my leftover savage gear. So that's another thing to take into consideration. And I've only played like, I haven't even played an hour with her. So I haven't been able to like gather a, a sense of how to best apply her or like the best teams to use her in. But like she's hitting pretty decently. I'd say she's hitting pretty hard. Look at that 130. I'm seeing a lot of 130s pretty decently. Axe Leap hitting for 230. You know what we should do? Let's take her, let's take her into, into Hydra. That would be a pretty good, pretty good test. 140. Yeah, no, it's actually pretty nice. That's a pretty nice thing. Okay, 2.7 million. Try her out in Hydra. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do this. We're gonna increase speed. We're gonna actually I should have done the other way. Actually, I'm gonna up, 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 restart. Okay, so here we are in Hydra. And we're gonna boost ourselves our turn meter. And we can actually use the increase attack and crit damage here. Let's go ahead and attack this head. And let's see if we can get her hit in. We're gonna pay attention to her. I think I saw her hitting for 103. And then let's hit the provoke on this Hydra head. Now she's going to hit her. What? Actually, no, we should hit her A3. Let's see what we do on this head. We're hitting for 234, so pretty consistent with the 234. Let's hit her again with the buffs, keeping that bu those buffs on. 71, we hit it over here. I think when she hit the A3 that time, she actually did not have increased attack. Someone might have to, I might have to recheck that. Let's go ahead and run this. See if I can single her out. Okay, I'm gonna let it run on auto. I'll let it run on auto and we're gonna see um, how Arwood is gonna do 100 on the A1. And it's good because I, I'm gonna compare her to what Ninja does and what Harima does in terms of damage. 74, was that 74? Someone wasn't looking. Okay, 100. Got the provoke up on this head, no worries. Whenever this head decides to put up the poison clouds, I'd like to aim down on this head, see if I can kill it before anything happens. Because if I can kill him, then the poison clouds fall off. All right. And we're gonna just keep this going. All right, let's check. Now this is a decapitated head. Same affinity, no decrease defense or weaken. Hitting for 483. Okay. Let's see what she does when I get the decreased defense and weaken if I can get Ninja to hit this over here. Oh, you know what? This is kind of a bad team. Harima and Ninja are in the same team. A1, 319. Hit this provoke. Let's give this to Arwen. A2. 190, 16. So it looks like her A2 isn't hitting too terribly hard. It looks like her A3 is like the biggest thing. Let's give her a boost. And 234. Can we get this ninja to hit the A1? I want to see what decreased defense looks like on her. It's not happening. Increase buff durations. A1. 356. Come on. Nope, no decreased defense. Maybe I should try on this one. 450 from you. Let's hit this. Get some A3 action going on. 661. I like that. Let's just hit the A1 here. And can I get the decrease defense down? Oh, he doesn't have enough accuracy. Actually, he does have enough accuracy. I don't know why he's getting 3%. It's kind of messed up. But okay. I'm going to rerun this. I'm going to let it run on full auto. Just going to leave it hands off. We'll take it to turn 20. Take it to turn 20. I'm not going to target anything. And we'll see who has more damage by the end of it.
we'll just let it let it run let it ride see what happens i'll get back to you all right so i'm gonna end it here i got to turn 24 i apologize i wasn't paying attention to it and uh, let's see on hard let's look at the comparison so arwid did 3.6 by herself and harima did 5.5 now i think that has to do a lot with mikage i'm gonna go ahead and go back into hard this time we're going to use mithrala in the lead that way we can get a consistent increased attack across the entire team try to keep things just about the same but this time we're also going to have hex and we're not going to have mikage in to do the ally attack on her a1 let me just go and make sure that i preset her moves here and everybody else is still gucci all right so we're hitting hard i'm gonna let it go on full auto again and then we'll take it to 24 and yeah we'll see how much she does this time the other thing did you guys see that her a2 landed on mithrala so one of the things that i was wondering right was would you guys it, whoever's using shuzen would you guys put somebody like arwin or even ninja who isn't who, who doesn't have an aura or an aura that's applicable to hydra like i think arwin's aura applies to faction wars but like would you apply it or would you put like harima in the leader position where her aura only applies to arena battles over getting somebody like i don't know a uh, duchess who gives a 19 percent boost or arbiter or not arbiter uh, mithrala who gives an accuracy boost aura for the entire uh, squad what would you guys do because i kind of want to have some my damage dealer in the leader position when I do use Shuzen, just so that every time she does place that buff, she's giving it to whoever that damage dealer is, like Harima, for an example. Because there's no sense really putting it on somebody like Mithrala, right? What is she gonna do with increased crit damage? Like she can, Mithrala does do, you know, some damage, but she's not like a nuker or anything. She's not gonna out nuke somebody like Krizia or Arwen, you know what I mean? So. What do you guys think? Let me know. I'll get back to you at stage 20, or when I get to boss count 24. Okay, so we are now approaching turn count 24. Gotta wait for the Hydra head. Okay, so let's end the battle there. That's 24, 17 mil. Looks like Harima still out damaged everybody. And Ninja came in second and Arwood came in third, which was, you know, to be expected. Surprisingly, Actually, not surprisingly, because Mithrala has the Hex, and that damage on Hex counts towards Mithrala. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. But yeah, on hard, um, Arwid is a pretty decent damage and dealer. And she I'm is in Savage, and two broken pieces. Here are the pieces of gear that I have. Again, this is just leftover pieces of gear that I had for Savage that I, I wasn't really using on anybody. We have crit damage. We're focusing on crit rate, crit damage and attack making sure that she is crit capped hitting as hard as she possibly can there is room for improvement here with oils re-rolling these whenever i decide to do sand devil again we got attack on attack on attack on titan over here crit damage with crit damage accuracy is okay i think especially when we're considering her a1 where we do need accuracy to steal that buff if i'm wrong let me know but i'm pretty sure that's how that works don't need too much accuracy i think because oftentimes we're not going to have debuffs on her because of her built-in a2 ability one thing that i was noticing was that arwin arwid not arwin arwid quiver grass felt kind of slow i felt like there were off there were a lot of moments where i i wanted her to go but she just wasn't going and i think i could improve by increasing her speed here but as you can see Priorities are crit damage, attack, speed, etc. Fully booked. Right here, you see she's fully booked. That aura is for 30%. And then if I could get a blessing on her, I think I would either go Heaven Cast if you can get enough buffs on her. If you get a team on her where, where she can do more damage according to uh, buffs. You could also do Phantom Touch. I like Phantom Touch. She's going to do more damage based on how much attack she has. Cruelty is not a bad choice for PvE content. It does stop after about 20%, and if you have other champions that do 
cruelty, you might want to consider something else. Maybe Phantom Touch might be the better one in the long run. But ideally, if I could get like a six star blessing for her, I'd definitely go Crushing Rend so that every hit will ignore a percentage of the target's defense plus extra speed. These are the masteries for her. Do not blindly copy masteries. Feel free to go ahead and take Helm Smasher though. And here are the final stats on her. 5k attack, 250 crit damage, 220 speed. These are like the standard baseline stats that I look for in a damage dealer. Do I think she's a great champion? Yeah, I think she's a pretty strong epic champion. Is she worth building? Yeah, I think she's worth building. Is she a great damage dealer? Yeah, I think she's a great damage dealer. Would I recommend that you go build her out? Yeah, build her out. Especially if you don't have any damage dealers for Sylvan Watchers. Aren't you the